Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, we'll look at the workflow of the new burn in metadata tool in the Flame 2017 products. This replaces the old burn in timecode, which is no longer available in the application. With burn in metadata, you have access to loads more information you can burn into an image, and it's also more customizable than the retired burn in timecode. One final big benefit is that burn in metadata is now available as a timeline effects, as a node in batch and batch effects, and as a separate module in the tools area of the desktop. So it's accessible everywhere when you need it. If you would like to follow along, please use your own media as this video is not footage specific. Now let's look at how it works. Let's start off with a quick example. Here is an edited sequence and you would like to apply burn in time code to the edit. Since burn in metadata is available as a timeline effects, you apply it like any other effects tool in the sequence. Now you could apply it directly to a selected segment, however the timeline effects will only apply to that shot. If you want to apply burn in metadata to the whole sequence, then I suggest you create an empty track above the edit and apply the timeline effects to the gap segment. So select the gap segment and press CTRL tab to bring up the effects ribbon. Click the burn in metadata timeline effects. Next, click the editor button. So let's say for instance, if you want source and record timecode, you need to add them. Now the burn in metadata tool works with metadata layers. Click and hold the add button and you will see all the metadata tags you could potentially burn into the image. So choose source timecode, and then choose record timecode. You can now select the individual layers and position them however you like. So I'll have my source and record timecode at the bottom of the frame, and that is it. You could save this as a setup and call it up whenever you need it. But what's really interesting is what's happening when we return to the sequence. If you grab the positioner and scrub the sequence, it's important to note that the timeline effects is reading the metadata of the segments on the tracks below. So that's like your burn in timecode like before. But with this version of the Flame products, you can export the sequence without having to render the burn in effect. This is much more efficient and is a big time saver. Incidentally, you'll get the same functionality if you used burn in metadata via the tools area. Now this is obviously the quick example, but there is so much more to burn in metadata. Let's return back into the editor. First off, you can add as many metadata layers as you want. So if you want more than just time codes, just add a layer. The available meta tags are more or less the same as what's available with the token naming system. But I also want to point out that there are some metadata tags that only appear in the timeline effects and tools, and not batch or batch effects. So let's say you want to see the relevant tape name or real name, the segment name, and the file path details of each segment. You can add each metadata layer and position them to your liking. If you accidentally choose the wrong metadata tag when adding a layer, you can just click the layer and change its metadata tag. If you had already made any adjustments, all the common attributes and alignments will remain when you switch the tag. You also have an eye icon to toggle the layer visibility. So now you can have as much or as little information as part of the burn in metadata. It's really up to you. Now the file location is obviously too long for the frame, so that will need fixing. For every metadata layer, there are three specific sections to make adjustments. You have common attributes, alignment, and layer specific adjustments. Common attributes is pretty self explanatory. You can make any adjustments to the properties of the text, add a shadow, background, and change the font. Note when you make adjustments to any of these settings, all the layers are being affected. This is because apply all is enabled. This only applies to the common attributes and not alignment or layer specific settings. 
so you can disable Apply to All and select the file location layer. Now adjusting the text size will only affect that layer. If you want to be creative, you can select the Source and Record timecodes and change their colour using the Colour Picker. Any changes you make are completely undoable with Control Z. Next, the alignment gives you three options to choose from. You can set a custom position like this. Or you can choose to align to the Safe Action or Safe Title. With either Safe Action or Safe Title, you get this alignment panel to choose where the selected layer will be placed. So select the Record Timecode layer and align it to the bottom right of the Safe area. Next, select the Source Timecode layer and align that to the bottom of the screen. Finally, select the Tape layer and align it to the bottom left of the screen. So you can quickly align individual layers to logical points on the safe areas. If you want to offset the layers after aligning them, you could switch the alignment to Custom Position and adjust the sliders. However, a quicker way is to enable the on-screen icons. Now select the segment name in the list and move it into position. Just so that you know, you also have a global access in the alignment options to be able to move all the layers as a group. Finally, you have layer specific settings. Now, depending on which metadata layer is selected, will change what you see here. For example, select the Record Timecode layer. The Label setting allows you to change the text before the colon. In this instance, you can customize the text before the record timecode. This is available for all metadata layers. You can also force a custom timecode and frame rate. With Custom Start enabled in this case, it will ignore the record timecode of the sequence. So elements are rarely easy to change. Most of the metadata layer customizations are pretty straightforward. For example, Selecting the file location is really handy. You can choose to include the file name in the file path, and you can also set a custom level. This removes the common directories of the file path and just focuses on the directories that are specific to this production. Coming back to the Add list, there are a lot more tags to choose from. You have Date, Resolutions, Project, User, Timecodes, Frame and more. All the Source Version tags relate to the OpenClip versioning workflow. So as you update your versions, they will be reflected in the metadata layers. Source Name is the original file name. Shot Name refers to the VFX shot name on the segment. And Segment Name refers to the name of the segment in the sequence. And finally, the Name tag refers to the name of the sequence. One extra metadata layer I'd like to add is the Custom Text. This creates an empty text layer where you can type whatever you want. For example, if you want to watermark the sequence, you could type Watermark and press Enter. You can scale the text as big as you like and turn down the opacity. With the alignment set to Selected Layer, choose Custom Position. You can position this layer, but it can also be rotated. You can't add a logo, but this can certainly protect your images if required. The other point I'd like to make is that there are no animation tools, as the purpose of this tool is just to burn in metadata. Now exit back to the sequence and you can scrub the result. As a tip, you could layer up burn in metadata over multiple gap layers. For example, if we look at this clip, you can have your timecode at the bottom while you work. The next track can contain more metadata if you're checking up on the editorial. And finally, the top track can have the watermark. You can export at any track level in the sequence for a variety of reasons, including approvals. Finally, if we switch to Batch, Burn in Metadata is also available here and Batch Effects. The big difference between the Batch node and the Timeline effects is that the Burn in Metadata node does not read the information from the incoming connection. 
It's impossible to tell what metadata to use because of so many possibilities with connecting the flow graph. Instead, you can copy metadata from other nodes. Select the burn in metadata node. Now hold T and click on the source clip to copy its metadata. This performs a one off copy to all existing metadata layers. If you add it in any new layers, they will not have the source clip's metadata. So you can take other nodes' data, but fully customize it after the fact. Now, in the case of batch and batch effects, if you want to keep the burn in metadata with everything all ready to go, you can simply save it into your custom node bin and drag it out when you wish. So, in conclusion, the burn in metadata is available everywhere in the Flame products. It's a timeline effects, processing node, and module in the tools area. It's very customizable, quick to use, and fits in very well into all aspects of the Flame 2017 products. Be sure to check out the other videos covering the features, workflows, and updates to the Flame 2017 products. Comments, feedback, and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos.